Hey everyone, welcome to Wetcode, where in this video we're going to learn how to use both JWTs and cookies in Express to authenticate a request, and also how to protect JWT cookies from cross-site request forgery or CSRF attacks. But so before we begin, let's talk about why we will store a JWT in a cookie. So JWTs are commonly used to implement authorization. Specifically, the user logs in with their credentials and the server returns a JWT. This JWT is then stored on the client. And as the JWT is stored in the client, it's important to store it securely. There are a few ways to store a JWT on the client, each with their own pros and cons. And one way is to store the JWT in an HTTP cookie. And storing a JWT inside a cookie is great because cookies have some flags to protect the JWT. So for example, if we go into the Chrome DevTools and look inside an application tab here, we can see some cookies. And some examples of flags are all these here, one of which is secure, which means cookies can only be transmitted over HTTPS, which means the same with our JWT. If it's stored in a cookie, we have same site, which is this one here, which is used to help mitigate CSRF attacks. And we also have HTTP only. Let me expand this. So HTTP only here, which means the cookie cannot be accessed through client-side scripts, such as JavaScript. However, it should be noted that storing a JWT inside a cookie is not foolproof as they are susceptible to cross-site request forgery attacks, or CSRF. And a CSRF attack is when an attacker tries to get a user to make an unwanted request. For example, say they, the attacker sends you email with a URL link and it makes a malicious request on your behalf. If you click on it, this is a CSRF attack. And cookies are vulnerable to CSRF because browsers automatically include cookies in the request. Therefore, if the attacker tricked the user to sending a request, such as clicking that link in an email, the cookie containing the JWT would be sent too. However, we can mitigate CSRF attacks by giving the cookie a short lifetime and also setting its same site attribute to strict or lax. And we can actually see some of that in here. If we look at strict, we use same site flag in the cookie, we have lax, and we also have a strict one down here. And we'll be going over that later in this video. But essentially, if we set to strict or lax, this can help ensure that authentication cookies aren't sent in cross-site request attacks. But so to demonstrate all this, we will be using the library's JSON Web Token and Cookie Parser. So let's install those here. So JSON Web Token, and this basically implements JWTs in a node application. We also have Cookie Parser, which is an express middleware that parses the cookie header and populates rec.cookies with the values. So it populates this object here with cookies that were sent in the request headers. But so our code will then consist of a login page, a protected route, and a global JWT authentication middleware. And actually to get started, I'm just gonna paste all this in here. So let me just paste in this code, but let's install these libraries now. But so here we essentially, the important part is we have four routes. So we have dash right here, which returns an HTML login page, which we can see by it sends back an index.html file. We have a login route that accepts a JSON payload from this HTML login form. We have a global authentication middleware, which is this app.use here, which checks the validity of a JWT. And then we have a protected route here, which is protected by this middleware called dash profile. So it requires a JWT to be accessed. So first let's focus on how the JWT is created and how the cookie is set on the client. And this is all done in this dash login route right here. So here are the steps involved. So first we get the username from the request body, and then we create a JWT token using this JWT.sign method. And what this method does here is it returns a JWT string. The first argument is the payload that we want to house inside the JWT, which for us is just the username. So we can identify the user by their JWT token. The second argument is the secret, which is used to sign the token. And note that in this application, I simply have the secret just hard-coded up here, but out in the real world, the secret should be stored safely, such as in an environment variable, kept out of any public reach, essentially. And this is because if attackers get a hold of this secret key, then they can forge their own tokens. But so, we, this, so this line here creates a JWT token that expires in an hour. And next, we add this JWT to a cookie. Specifically, what this does is it adds a set cookie header on the response. So on this response object here that we send back to the user or the client, it'll have a header called set cookie, 
where the key is my JWT and the value is the actual JWT token. And of course we can call this whatever we want to. This is just used as the key to obtain whatever value is stored in the cookie. And then finally what we have here, so this third argument to res.cookie is a configuration object for setting flags on the cookie. So you can see we set HTTP only to true, secure to true, same site to strict, and max age to an hour to match the age of our JWT token. And once again, it is that HTML form that we send back here that will send this information to this login route. Let's actually get this started now. And it seems like we need to, let's install some typings for these two libraries too. So the at types dash JSON web token and at types dash cookie parser with a dash D. Sweet, but now all we have to do is let's run this program, which will be npm start, and I'll demonstrate the login functionality. So we got a server listening on port 4001. And so now we have our simple HTML login form. We're clicking login. We'll send the payload here to dash login to create a JWT inside a cookie. And let's also open up some dev tools so we can see this in action. Let's actually go to the network tab. And now let's fill in this form. So let's say quick code password, whatever it is, and now click login. What we can see if we look in here is a request, let me maximize this, is a post request to dash login, where the payload of course is our username and password. And if we look inside the response headers, we can see set cookie, which is my JWT, and then here's our actual JWT token. So this here, which is what will be decoded on the server to identify the user. And we can see our properties that we set here, such as max age, um, some default ones like pass when it expires. And then we have our HTTP only secure and same site set to strict. And so this myJWT, remember, is the key that we set right here and then the token here. So this right here equates to this set cookie header. But so now we have a cookie set in the client and we can also see that by what we sent back was a message saying cookie has been set but now let's move this over here and let's focus on our global authorization middleware or this one right here, which is basically used to verify if the request is authenticated. And so what this route, what this middleware does is it protects certain routes. And to protect a route in Express, you, basically, you simply need to place some kind of authentication middleware before the middleware you want to protect in the middleware stack. So because this is used placed before this profile, it'll be protected. If it was placed after, it would not be protected. But so here is what this middleware does. So first we can see we get the JWT from the cookies header. So specifically what we'll be looking for is a cookie with the key in here, the key my JWT. And if we get that, we will have the JWT token. If no token is provided, then we'll respond saying unauthorized with a 403 error. On the other hand, if we do get a token, we need to verify that token with our secret. So what this method here verify does is it returns the JWT payload if the token is valid. In other words, if the token that we receive from the cookie header hasn't been forged, tampered with, or expired, then it'll be a valid token. And when we, what is, we'll do is it'll decode it and give us back the payload, which for us will be the username, which is what we set here. So it'll get this information. And then we can attach it to res.locals.user, which is basically what you should use to keep variables for a certain request and response lifecycle. And next, if the JWT is valid, then we go to the next middleware, which means we pass the valid, we pass the validation check or authorization, and we can access this dash profile. If there's something wrong with the cookie, when we run verify, we'll go to this error block, we'll clear the cookie from the user, and we'll set them as unauthorized. So now to demonstrate this, let's actually, let me switch these sides. Let's put this over here, this one here. Let me close out. And now let's try accessing, I believe it's dash profile. So dash profile. And what we get is hello wit code. And it got this name, so from our res.locals. So we obtain the username, which is what was set here from the token, and we respond with it. And if we look in here, we'll see in the request headers. So here are the response headers. If we look at the request headers here, we should have a cookie, which here it is. This one here is something to do with Google Ads. But if we scroll down, we can see my JWT, which is provided here. But now if we go into our, let's go into the application tab, check the cookies for localhost, here's our JWT. If we remove this cookie, say we delete it, and now let's try accessing this route again, we will get an unauthorized message. So we would have to log in all again to create another JWT. And now let's set our name to pizza guy, some random password. 
log in, we got a cookie set again. Now if we go to dash profile, we get hello pizza guy. But so this is my video on JWTs and cookies with Express, specifically with authorization. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. If you want to support me, please consider downloading my Chrome extension called Witceptor. And besides that, thank you again and have a good one.